A group of businessmen get together from a business entity and plan to establish a mining operation. The businessmen go to the wilderness and hire an Indian to be their guide. The Indian guide leads the businessmen to a substantial iron deposit, and the men write up a document granting 12 31 hundredths of their business entity as payment for services rendered. Fast forward more than 20 years, the debt has never been paid and the Indian has died. A daughter comes forward with a piece of paper written by the businessman all those years ago. Does she have a valid claim? This is the plot of the book Laughing Whitefish by Robert Traver. Traver, who also wrote the book Anatomy of a Murder, was the author's pen name. Traver's real name was John D. Volker, and he was also a justice of the Michigan Supreme Court in the 1950s and 60s. The events in Laughing Whitefish are inspired by a real court case from Michigan in the 1800s. This book is a legal thriller from an era before John Grisham. The book is not perfect, but it's interesting. Laughing Whitefish demonstrates how a judicial opinion can be reverse engineered to produce an entertaining work of fiction. Best of all, it inspired me to look up the actual court case which inspired the book. I have created PDFs which are available download in the link below, and also I plan to make a video about how I found these court cases in the public domain. I'm also thinking about making a video about converting these court cases into an ebook format, so please comment and let me know if you would find that valuable and interesting. The question presented in this case is whether the daughter of a Native American's second wife has the right to bring the lawsuit. Essentially, the Iron Company claimed that the daughter was not legitimate because she was born of a polygamous marriage. In other words, her father may have still been married to his first wife when he married the second wife and had the daughter who sued the Iron Company. Since our legal system is built on the English common law, and since that law forbids polygamy, the Iron Company was initially successful with its defense that the daughter was illegitimate and therefore unable to bring a lawsuit. Eventually, the case went to the Michigan Supreme Court three times and the daughter did eventually prevail in winning the 12 31 hundredths of the business entity that were owed to her father. The value of those 12 shares was worth much more by the time of the lawsuit, more than 20 years after uh, the shares were issued. Key to the court's analysis is the recognition of Indian tribal law. Essentially, the polygamous marriage was valid if it was valid under tribal law as treaties with the tribe had language upholding and respecting the tribe's internal governance. Very interesting stuff. Anyway, check out the book, Laughing Whitefish, and check out the court opinions linked in the description below. I have to get going since this is a library book. I've got to return it. Finally, please check out my collection of art for sale and clothing collection on Redbubble and subscribe to my channel, The Art of Law.